right into the word. And I'm, I've got a, I, I've preached this message, um, I think 26 times this season. And I have other things to preach, but this message, I believe, is, uh, is a message that's going to change the destiny of your life. It is so important. I believe it's what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. And because it's important, I want you to, to take notes and, and don't sit here and apply this to all your neighbors. Allow the Holy Spirit to put the searchlight on your heart. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we sit here and say, you know, that, that, that applies to this person over here. And I see that over here. And, you know, if this person... Try today to do a little bit of introspection and say, where in my life can I improve and where can I step up to become all that God wants me to be? Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We did not come into this house today to seek a man or to hear the voice of a man or the wisdom of a man or the, the thoughts of a man, but we've come here to hear your voice. Teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. For you're the teacher. We're, we're just uh, the pupil. We're the disciple. So, Lord, we take everything that would be a hindrance to our hearing, we remove those hindrances, and we're we're getting ourselves ready to receive the word engrafted into our hearts, which is able to save our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10 and verse 25 through 37. Luke chapter 10, verse 35 through... Or 25 through 37, and I'm going to be reading out of the New King James if you guys up there in the spaceship can dial that in. It would be helpful. Luke 10, 25 through 37. This is the parable of the Good Samaritan. How many of you have heard this before? How many of you have a Bible? How many of you refuse to answer any question that I might ask? <laughs> I just, just wonder how. You've probably heard this story before. And, uh, and then I'm going to give it a modern twist at the end. It's going to, I might get thrown out of the church, but we're just going to try it anyway. All right, it says, Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, what is written in the law, what is your reading of it? So he, this, this uh, lawyer said, answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor, love your neighbor, one more time, love your neighbor, so we're really to love our neighbor as we love our self. I would make a note of that in your Bible. Verse 28 said, And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But, circle the but. Every time you have a but, you, you have a, a, well, you know what a but's there for. But's going to change everything. Have you ever had somebody come up to you and say, listen, I love you, but that just about cancels out all of the I love you. You know, you may be left, but I love is gone. No, but is, uh, it's used, people use but because they don't, want to, they don't want to just tell you the truth. So we see here, uh, Lord, but, and, and look at the reason that he uses this. What verse was I at? I'm lost. Oh, here, 29. Sorry about that. But he wanted to justify himself. Now, underline that. You see, this, his whole purpose, it would be great if people asked questions with a, a pure heart and they really wanted to learn and they're out to try to get, uh, you know, 
get something from Jesus and their, their, their motives were pure. But no, this guy is there. He's a, he's a lawyer by trade. He, he specializes in Jewish law and he's asking questions that he thinks he can use to trip up Jesus and get him to say something that could be put into the, 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 the Nairobian or into one of those daily papers. And he would like to, to catch him in something. But as they say in America, this was not Jesus' first rodeo. Jesus had been through this before. Amen? And it's a little hard to catch the Son of God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the, all, the all-knowing one. It's kind of hard to catch him off guard. Amen? But he goes right along with him. And he says... Uh, but he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Well, let me ask you, who is your neighbor? Do you have a neighbor in the house? Point to your neighbor in the house. Just point to him. Okay? Are these the only neighbors you have? So you have neighbors back in your neighborhood. So we know what our neighbors are. It's... Too bad that he didn't go and fin this lawyer didn't get his last bit of his education, couldn't figure out who his neighbors were anyway. Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man. Now, anytime you see in the scripture, Jesus used... He's talking about somebody that he knows and that the crowd may know. So a certain man went down from Jerusalem... To Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing wounded him and departed leaving him half dead now by chance underline that word by chance I've found that in my life and in the life of most believers there's no such thing as chance there's just divine appointments unscheduled divine appointments amen but we'll go along with this. By chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at that place, he came over and got a good look and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had, he had, underline that word, compassion. We're going to go back to that again. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his animal, and brought him to the inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took two days' wages and gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take heat, care of him, whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? Who was the real neighbor? The Samaritan. How many of you agree with Lift, lift something up, if you agree with it. Some of you are just in rebellion. I just, I don't know. And Jesus said, he who showed mercy on him, then Jesus said, go and do likewise. In other words, just do what you have seen done, and you will be all right. Now, I'm going to put this sermon in a modern context. We're going to say that the, the businessman that was traveling, uh, there, he was going from, uh, from, from Mombasa, uh, up the Mombasa Road to Nairobi. Okay? And he's on this journey. He's out there around uh, Sultan Hamoud. You know? It's a little bit dangerous out there, especially if you get there in the wrong time of day, animals and such. 
And the Gaza boys, remember the Gaza boys? They, found, they fell upon him and they robbed him. And they beat him and they stripped him of all his clothes and, and they took everything that he had and they left him there naked on the side of the road with nothing and, and half dead. Now, you know, if you've ever traveled that road, it seems like when you're going somewhere, there's a lot of traffic, but when you need help, nobody's around. Have you ever seen that to be true? You'll wait an hour and a half, but boy, if you're in a hurry, there's too many cars. Well, coming along uh, on, on the drive uh, up, you know, you go up from Mubasa's down at sea level, you go up to Nairobi. On the drive up to Nairobi, there came our first uh, uh, contestant here, uh, this, this uh, Levite, and we're going to call him the bishop. Now, he's in a hurry. I, I don't know. I have a lot of bishop friends, and they're always in a hurry. Okay? So the bishop's in a hurry. He's, he's got a conference, and, and he's... He, I'm, now, listen, I'm not thinking of any specific bishop. You could just fill in the blank in your my, imagination. I'm not going to... I'm not going to say it's Bishop A, B, C, D, or E. I'm just saying it's a bishop. And he's in such a big hurry that he didn't even really slow down. Now, don't be too hard on the bishop. I'm sure that he said a little prayer as he went by. You know, a little prayer. Lord, send somebody. You know, help, help, a, help a brother out. And, and he just, he accelerated now, then comes uh, another young man, and he's the what? You got the Levite, and the, you got the priest? Which came first? Okay, well, the priest is the bishop, and then the Levite is, we'll call him the pastor. So the priest came by, he, didn't, he drives on, and, and then the pastor comes by. Now, you see, a pastor, many times they're closer to the flock than bishops are, and because it's just his, by nature, he wants to see what's going on, or he could just be Kenyan. He stops and gets out and goes to look at the guy. Now, that happens in Kenya a lot. You know, I had a, a, a city bus roll over uh, on, on the hill in which uh, Rhonda and I live and fell over on top of a car, crushed the car down, and it's because he took the turn too tight and there was too much weight on the top and it just, I watched it out my kitchen window, just rolled over and blam on top. So I come down and run down to the, you know, I'm a former policeman, so I got to feel like I got to help a little bit. Run down there and I, we're helping get, uh, especially the poor boy that was in the car, he got flattened down to like a pancake. We got him in another car and sent to the hospital quickly because he was in, he, he had problems. The, the ones that were in the city bus, nobody fell out the window as it was rolling over. So it was just a matter of people being maybe scratched up a little bit or shook up. And we got, finally got everybody out and we waited for the police. Now, what do you think is the number one thing that I heard being said by the several thousand who had come out of uh, the woodwork to see this crash, what do you think is the number one thing said by Kenyans at a crash site? Polisana. 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 I heard people say Polisana. I heard people say Polisana. Thank God that wasn't me. Polisana, everybody say it. Oh, you say it like you've never used it before in your life. Say Polisana. And what does it mean? Sorry. Now, feeling for, sorry for someone, but not feeling strong enough to do anything about it is called Polisana. It is sympathy. It will never move you to act. It just makes you feel better. 
Because every time you say polisane, I don't, I'm not doubting whether you mean sorry or not, but I do think you have hidden in, in, hidden in your meaning sorry, and I'm so glad that's not me. Ho! Oh, I'm glad I wasn't in that. I'm glad that's not me today. And so polisana is one of those words. I've lived here about nine and a half years now. And I would say it's in the top ten of words that I hate. I hate it. So you feel very strongly about it. I said, I do, I do, I do. I do because it's just sympathy. And it's a sense of relief that you're not the person being in trouble. Now, there's another word that I want you to become acquainted with, and that is the word empathy. We have sympathy, which is like polisana. Then we have empathy. Empathy. Now, empathy is a much better word. In the Latin, it means compati, which means to suffer with. Have you ever heard the word compatible? That, that comes from the word compati, which means, in this context, it means when you have empathy for someone, you not only feel bad for them, but you suffer with them. It hurts you. It bothers you. And because it hurts you and bothers you, it often can move you to do something. Okay? So, compassion... is empathy in action. We feel the suffering of others and it's starting to move us. To, what can we do about it? Now, the word compassion literally means to turn your empathy into action. Now, if you... Uh, Go to the book of James. Are you enjoying this this morning? I know I'm not your bishop and I don't have the silver tongue that he does. And you know, I've been, I've been preaching now for 44 years and I still have a lot to learn. You know, I, I was a pastor in the United States. Uh, we pastored for nearly 30 years. Uh, we grew a church to nearly 6,000 adults, one of the great churches in our state of Florida. And uh, I had a, a television ministry, went around the world. We gave each year $4 million to missions. And so we were a, we were a very uh, successful, a very uh, hardworking church, a, a missions church. And this is why, you know, not only do you have a choice where you go to church, but Rhonda and I decided, we've been here nine years, and, and sometimes we get a chance to come sit in church, and we have sat in other churches, but uh, this season, when we came back, I approached uh, your bishop and my dear friend, uh, Bishop Jimmy and Mama Sita is what I call her, uh, Pastor, uh, and I asked if they wouldn't mind having a couple of Mzungus. Uh, could, could they watch out for us? Could they be our pastors? And they said, no, nope, we don't take Mzungus here. We, we, <laughs> no, they didn't. They said, of course. And so we've been here. So we're one of you. This is our church of choice. Amen. Amen. This is our church of choice. And so I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm here just to be a blessing to my bishop. I was sick last week, last Sunday. Uh, you know, that's one thing when you're an American, you, you, it's easy to pick up little things. And uh, Pastor call, uh, Mama Sita called me right after the service was over and, are you okay? And prayed for me and then called Rhonda and prayed for her. And then uh, Tuesday, Bishop called me, are you okay? And prayed for me. And then he called me back in 30 minutes and says, I, I want you to come preach. So I was glad to do that. Amen. And anything I can do to help you or be a blessing to you, uh, 
you, you let me know and I'll do everything I can to help you. Now, where did I left off at some place? Uh, James, that's it, James chapter 2. Go with me real, real, real quick and we'll start bringing this uh, message to a close. And it starts at verse 14. I want to ask you this question. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he does not do anything with it? Can, can that kind of faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute and of daily food, and one of you says, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the thing which is needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have work, is dead. But someone will say, you have your faith and I have my works. Show me your faith without your works and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God you do well. Even the demons believe that and tremble. But do you want to know, foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you not see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as for righteousness and he, called on the, he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Now do you understand that? It's easy to say I'm, I got faith and it's, it's another level to say I have faith and you can look at my life and see my faith in action. Amen. Look, don't fall asleep. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that compassion, compassion is, compassion is polisana with something in your hand. Now, I don't, listen, polisana would be taken off my worst sayings in Kenya list if when a person said polisana and they looked at the person that had a need and they blessed them. Amen! Amen. Now, I'm just asking. How many of you here this week had a, a, a rough week financially? You don't have to give the details. I'm not going to ask you. I just want you to slip up your hand. If you had a rough week, oh, they're all in the back. Did you? Well, look, you didn't tell me what it is, but mom and I want to just put something in your hand. Maybe it'll help a little, okay? There's a brother over here. Where? Huh? Who was it? Oh, you did. Are you sure? You look so prosperous. Are you sure? <laughs> I, I feel like I should be getting a loan from you. Are you? You went through something. It was, it was, was it hard? All right. Th this is just a seed towards helping you out, okay? And I mean that. I mean, I could say polisana, but you wouldn't do anything for you if I said it. So I just want to say polisana with something in my hand. Amen? All right. Now, somebody back here, a lot more now, thousands have, no, I'm just kidding. Really? Something happened. Holy Sana, did you? You did too. Who else back here? Oh, she's had, but you have put your hand down like, okay, don't, don't forget this lady over here. All right. That's something for you. All right. You're welcome. Who else? I think that baby's calling. Baby's calling. Baby needed something. Who else? Oh, back right. Excuse me, folks. We're, we're just giving out money. See, I've never seen this happen in church before. Probably never will. Who was it back here? You and you. 
All right. Anyone else? All the way over here. Next time, the back row people need to sit on the front row <laughs> so they can get access to my money quicker. You know, I've preached this message this uh, season 25 times. And I've handed out money in every service. And I bet you I'm exceeding three or 400,000 shillings now in giving, you know. Who over here? Anybody else? Before I turn the gears. Oh, okay. I'm glad we, did. we walked over here. Thank you. Hmm? You're hiding behind those foster grants. <laughs> Can I see your eyes real quick? Just slow, lower them. Let me see. Okay, you are a person in there. And then, uh, are you a family here? Yeah, sure. All right, you need this for okay. these two babies, okay? Yeah, sure. I, I can just tell. All right, anybody else? Oh, another one over here. See, they had to call their CPA and see what's the... Oh, how precious. Who is this little... Can I borrow this one? Can I hold it? You sure? Excuse me. We're going to do a grandfather thing. <laughs> Hi, sugar. Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda. Look what I found. <laughs> now, I, I told him I might bring it back. But we could borrow it, maybe. This is what cures grandparents who are away from their children. Say a blessing Here, over take, our take it. No, 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 you no, take no. it Hold back it. to her. No, no, no. Here, take it. Hold take it. it. Hold it. Hi, Mama. They're that way. Let's say a blessing. Oh, you want, uh, everybody reach out your hand. Father, mm -hmm. I pray that this few minutes that this baby has been in our arms, mm -hmm. that some of that anointing that rests upon my life and on Rhonda's life would be transferred into this little life and that you would literally change her destiny and that her narrative, the things that would have been said about her future are going to be something other is going to be said and Lord, she's going to become a leader in her generation. In Jesus' name. Huh? All right. Thirty seconds. All right, thirty seconds. All right, my time is up. Would you like to hear the end of this? You just have to come back the next time. All right. Anything else I need to say? Can I give you one more? Can I give one more verse? All right. I, I want you to go to the to the book of Proverbs in verse nineteen and seventeen. And thank you for letting me just be at home. This is kind of like preaching in your own home and you take your time and get to know people and uh, I'm, I'm just very thankful. I'm, I, I love Bishop Jimmy and, and, and Pastor Alice very much. They're uh, some of our dearest friends and it's an honor to be in this pulpit. Proverbs 19 verse 17 and I'd like you to read this out loud if you can. If you help the poor, or here it says, he who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, everybody together, lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Now, that's the New King James Version. Um, another version says, if you help the poor. Another version says, he who gives to the poor. So the idea is, if you give to the poor, you're giving a loan, you're, you're ta God is taking out a loan from you and giving it to the person. Now, you call that a filizu loan or a faluda something loan. What do you call that, falizi? Uh, huh, huh? What is it? A filiza. 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 Well, I, I've known those loans. 
I, I've never had one, but I, I had, a lady owed me some money. And uh, she said, look, my husband's sending me money for you. And I'm like, I praise the Lord. And uh, so I'm waiting there, and, 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 and all of a sudden her face went, she had forgot that she had taken out a 10,000 Feluzulum. And all that 10,000 didn't get to me. It went shoop, right back to Safari or whoever it is. Now, God says that when you see somebody that is poor, if you will bless them, God will in turn pay you back. And it said... It said, with interest. So this is the only time in the entire scripture that I could find. And, you know, I, if you earn your doctorates, I have, an earned, I have a doctor of ministry degree and I have a PhD. And all I did in those two degrees is learn how to do research. And, and, and in all of my research, I could find no other giving in the Old or New Testament where God owes you. Like when you tithe, you know what tithing is. Tithing is when, when you uh, take care of God's man and God's church, God takes care of you. If you take care of God's business, God takes care of your business. You take care of your pastor, God will take care of you. It's just, look, that's reciprocity, okay? But this is something different. This, write this down in your notes, this one verse, and I could give you more later, but this one verse provides a cover, an insurance cover over your life. And when you need help the most, and ladies and gentlemen, all of us at times in our life need help. And if we have been helping the poor and caring for those who are in need, God will honor that and pay you back at the right time with interest. And I do not believe you nor I will get to heaven and we will say to God, you owe me. I lent all that money to poor people and you never paid me back what you owed me. I just, I just can't imagine that that'll ever happen. I think when you get to heaven, he says, you know what? I gave you exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that is at work in you. Amen. Amen. Would you bow your heads? Now, I, I didn't get into it, but if you want to grow your church, You can grow your church by reaching out to your neighbors where you live. And when they get into trouble or they have a little difficulty, or they're sick or their kids are sick or their husband's left and all that kind of stuff, and you can go over and provide a little bit of encouragement. If they're sick, take them a bowl of soup with some bread. If they're, if they're uh, going through a hard place, uh, give them a little bit of money. Not, not that you become their source, but you're going to become a blessing. And if they ask you why you're doing it, say, well, w uh, this crazy Mzungu came to our church and taught this principle, and I just believe it, that if I bless you, one day God will have to help take care of me if I get into trouble. And, and we, you know, all of us over at Zimmerman, we, we love you. We, we'd just love to have you come to our church and learn these kind of things with us. Listen, if you help them when they're down, they're more likely to come see you when they're well. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this congregation. If you would like an anointing, a, a, an, an, the anointing of compassion to flow in your ministry, I want you to stand up and let me just pray a specific release of, an, of my anointing onto your ministry and life. If you want to be used by God to be a blessing and you understand it, all right, now take one more extraordinary step. Take one hand and put it on your wallet. Or if you have a purse, 
take one hand and pick up that purse. All right, Father, now every person that is standing has readied themselves by, by getting a hold of that wallet and getting a hold of that purse. They've readied themselves to be a blessing. And I pray, God, using my, my faith in my miracle-believing faith, I believe, God, that as each of these members sows seed into those that are, are suffering, I pray, God, this time next year, as we have learned from an excellent Bible teacher in this place, that the narratives will have changed and the things that we are talking about one year from now, September of next year, will be about how you have blessed us and highly favored us, that you've gone before us, and that you surround us with favor as a shield. I believe, God, the best days for us are on the way. And I thank you, God, that I am a part of that miracle. Now, everybody say this out loud. Say, Polisana. Say it like you mean it. Polisana. With something in my hand. 